You may have noticed that so far we've done from the joint back with the solid hoof and we've done from the joint forward with the flexible toes. What we haven't talked about are these six girth measures. Talked about the length, the profile, everything else, the arch, but these are we're now going to have a look at because they're obviously equally important. So let's start with the short heel and the long heel measure. So when we went around the uh, bulb of the heel, it was round. But if you actually look at the uh, seat of the last, as, because it's a tool for making a shoe on, we've got a little ridge, a feather line. In other words, instead of it being round, there's a little ridge, which makes it actually slightly larger than the round heel of the foot. So when we do the corresponding thing of taking the, say, the long heel, we got to remember that the last is slightly larger, maybe by two or three millimeters there, than the foot was. So the long heel measure is 348, so we're going to make it 351. I'm going to add three millimeters just to, to make up for the fact that it's got a little ridge there. So it's a bit of a trick, but get that on the back. You put your thumb there, and then you put the uh, 51 on there. You make a continuous loop, and then you just pull it and find out where it lands. And it lands right there. So what we've done is we've located where the second cuneiform bone is that was on the foot. So that's a very important shape, bone, so we know where that is. Now we're going to do the short heel, which is 321. So again, adding for the ridge, instead of 321, let's do 320, uh, 324, okay? So there's 324, and lo and behold, there's the top of the instep. So on a last like this, if we were going to make a boot last, we'd put it an addition on top and that would curve out here to represent the shin. But because it's a shoe last, we have it laid back. So this point, the pattern maker, when they go to make a shoe, say they're going to have the facings, they know that the facing mustn't go past that point. So the, uh, the facings will curve around there. You see the shoe starting to take shape, okay, on the last. So we've got the uh, cuneiform, the top of the instep, to correspond with those. Now, looking at the outside, we put this so it's all in the right place. That's all fitting. The joint is fitting there. The joint's there. So I'm going to mark on the joint here. So we know in there is the uh, base of the fifth metatarsal, there's our uh, um, third measure, and there's the fourth measure. So if you look, uh, there's the base of the fifth metatarsal, there's the crank. See where the crank occurs, where the last curve? So the metatarsals are in there. There's five of them, the straight. And then all the, the cuboid and the three cuneiforms and the navicular in there. And so it's here that the foot is bending. And if we went up on a higher heel, it would bend even more. Okay, so, so first measure, or, and the first measure and second measure, third measure, fourth measure, uh, fifth measure, sixth measure. Okay, also on the medial side, uh, remember, there's the big toe joint and the behind the, toe, the, behind the joint measure. I don't put these on uh, because uh, I already know where the cuneiform and the top of the instep are. Okay, so now uh, what I want to do is get these to measure the same as the draft. And so when I put that on there, there's your uh, 237, 237. The tension I put on the foot is now going to be the tension that's on the shoe when it's made, because when the last is slipped out of the shoe, then that's the volume of the inside of the shoe. So next is the behind the joint. So I come up where I bisected that tape measure. I come around the fifth, 
and there we have uh, 228. Now what I've done is 229, and the reason I've done 229 is because if it's too small there, then the, uh, our, the, the shoe will slide down that little bit in order to get the extra room, and that throws a crease there. So if you see a crease here, it's not because it's too uh, small or too big there, it's because it's too small here and the shoe is sliding down. So I've made it about a millimeter too big, just there. Now I'm coming around to the third measure and up to the cuneiform, and that says 229, and there is 229, okay? So remember, there will be a sock lining going in here as well that will take up some of the room. But if I have the facings uh, stitched together on the last, I want them to open up slightly. So I've got that um, a bit uh, big so that when the, uh, the sock is in, it'll just spread to uh, make the, the facings not touch. Then I come top of the instep to the fourth measure, and I come around, so that's just going into that notch where the perineal muscles go, come to the top of the instep, and 246. See that 246? Again, I like to have it slightly large there, although that's right on, just because I know from experience that if it's, that it needs to be slightly large, otherwise the, uh, the facings gape. So, that's transferred, uh, and of course if it was too small, uh, then I could add a, a shover on top. I could get a, a piece of leather like this, you know, this oak bark tan leather, cut it out and skive it and cement it on and shape it as if it was wood. Oak bark tan leather behaves very much like wood uh, when it's cemented on. And that is how I make it bigger if it's too small, but we like to avoid that. We like to show up with a nice wooden last at the end. So that's how we uh, get all of these measures. So this is now a complete last. We've got the support at the back. We've got the arch just right. We've got the uh, fronts, uh, the uh, beautiful shape and without crushing the toes too much. And now we've transferred the, the short heel, the long heel, and one, two, three, four girth measures onto the last. And uh, the only thing, other thing that's worth noting is that uh, when the shoe's made on the last, the last has to come into two parts in order to get it out. It's called slipping the last. This is a cuprevet, first seen in France around about 1890. And so when you take the screw out and you put a hook in there, this slides out of the shoe like that, and then you put a hook in there and this comes out of the shoe like that. Uh, because the uh, foot can flex, then the foot comes easily out of the shoe, but the, uh, the rigid last won't come out uh, of a shoe unless it breaks into two pieces. So that's it. That's our bespoke orthopedic last made to the bespoke orthopedic draft.